there is one more thing that we can do to make our DSP a little better. Uh, the process block is running sample rate divided by uh, buffer size times per second. So, you know, a bunch of times per second. And you can see that we are setting or, or we are getting the variable that we want from the value tree every single process block or every single time it's processing, which we only really need to get it when we move the the slider, right? We don't need to actually get it every frame or whatever. So what we can do is there's actually a method called um, parameter changed where every time you change a parameter, um, you can do something, you can put some code into a method. So instead of calling this, you know, 344 times a second when you only might need it one time a second or maybe even one time every couple of seconds, um, we can move these out of here and we can put it in a different uh, method. So this one is called parameter changed. So what this is gonna do, parameter changed, it takes in a parameter ID, which is uh, this ID right here that we set up at the top. This is the ID right here. Uh, and then it takes in a new value, which is the actual value being changed by the slider or whatever. Uh, so we can implement that. Let me go pull it from here. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and just put it right under it. And let's make sure we have the correct last name. We also need our curly braces. And one more thing that we actually need, because if we build, you might think, okay, we have the definition right here and we just implemented it. So it will build and it will be all fine and dandy. Only virtual member functions can be marked override. I've marked it override, but it works in this project. Is that, isn't that so strange? So what's actually happening is there's another, there's another thing that we actually have to implement for this to work. And if we go to the docs and we go to parameter changed for the page we're on, we see this listener and this is what it actually needs to uh, actually work. Let's create this listener. Um, you create it at the top right here, but we actually need to do, this is the, uh, plugin processor class definition and it is inheriting this little colon means that this class is inheriting from this class so this is uh, audio processor so we need to inherit from another class which is listener so we can just put a comma and we can um, we need to let's see we need to also inherit from juice audio processor value tree state and in that class and or namespace. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, it has a listener. So basically this parameter changed uh, is going to be called anytime this listener, which is listening for changes. Anytime this listener uh, uh, hears a change, it will call parameter changed. And then whatever is in here, um, it will, you know, do, it'll do something. So how do we actually get the listener to listen to things? We have to actually add each of these uh, parameters as a listener. So we can do this uh, in this part of the constructor right here. We can say tree state, which is our, um, you know, our tree state, our value, audio processor value tree state. And then we can add a listener, add parameter listener, uh, which parameter we want. So let's start with gain. Um, and then it's going to be this. And then we have to just do that for uh, the next one, which is phase. And if you don't do this, you'll you'll move the dials and nothing would happen. So if you ever add, a, um, I do this all the time where I'll, I'll, while I'm prototyping, I'll add a parameter and I won't do this in the process block, I'll put this in the parameter change method, which we're gonna do in a second, but I always forget to add the listener. So I'll be changing the, the slider and it won't be doing anything. And I'll just assume it's a DSP problem, but I just forgot to put the listener. Um, and then in the destructor right here, we need to um, remove the listener. 
Uh, because if we don't, I think that'll probably be a memory leak. Remove Pran listener. And, uh, let's see, gain. And this just, um, this is the class that we're currently in. So, you know, this class right here. And, uh, let's do the same thing. Phase. Cool. And now we can implement the logic in parameter change. So the difference is the process block, like I said, is going to be called 300 times a second or whatever it is. And we don't need to do this logic 300 times a second because most of the time we're, we're we only need it to happen when the, the slider or whatever changes. So we're wasting a whole lot of CPU and memory by setting these a million times. So what we'll do is we can check for each parameter ID, which is these. So what we want to do is say, if the current changed parameter that the listener is listening for is gain, do this. If it's phase, do this. So if a parameter ID is equal to gain, uh, we're going to do something. And if parameter ID is equal to phase, we're going to do something else. The weird thing though, is that you can see since we took everything out of process block, this is all broken. So we're going to need, uh, we're going to need phase and we're going to need raw gain. So the best thing to do would actually be to make a variable in the class. So let's do this. Let's do float raw gain um, and equal one by default because if the decibel level is zero the gain level is one because if you multiply it by one nothing happens which is a decibel level of zero and we'll also have a bool phase equal false and that should fix these issues right here xcode does this weird thing where it takes sometimes it takes a long time for the errors to disappear so you can see it built successfully because we have made these variables, but they're not actually being written to yet. Um, so we need to actually do that up here. So what we need to do is in gain, do the same thing. We'll say, um, what is it? Raw gain is equal to juice decibels decibels to gain and what do we pass in here what we did in the process block was that pointer tree state dot get raw parameter blah 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 but what we have here is we have this called new value and what new value is is whatever the listener is listening to and currently here's a change that will be this parameter id so at that instant in time whatever is being changed new value is going to equal whatever that change is on the slider or whatever it is so if the change is gain, new value is whatever the number is coming from that um, that slider or whatever. And we can do the same thing. Phase is equal to new value and that should be good enough. And we can check this with a simple debug statement, which is a cool um, juice thing. So it's just a way to log stuff to the console in debug mode. So it's just capital DBG and uh let's log new value so that we can see it in real time so let's do it for that let's also do it for phase and we'll build in standalone um so that we can see this debug stuff oh and there's something even better hold on we're gonna debug gain is blah 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 and then we're gonna say phase is blah 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 when you put multiple things <clears throat> in this debug statement you'll want to put these two um less than signs in front of it and yeah so let's build that so this is the console down here so let's open that up a little bit so i'm going to move the gain slider and we should see gain is whatever the slider is set to so this is good the listener is listening to each of these parameters and whenever the listener hears a change 
So right now the change is in gain. So that means the current parameter ID, because that's the one that's changing, is gain. And it's calling this function whenever that change is that parameter ID. So we can see that since that gain message is being printed out, this is also working. And then if I flip the phase, you can see now it's the phase. And it's saying zero or 01. It's not going to say true or false because the console is just going to, um, you know, convert to zero or 01. But it, it's it's working. It's the same thing. So that's much better because now this logic is only being called whenever it needs to. So originally this was being called, you know, in the process block. So it was being called 300 times a second, which it doesn't need to because we're not changing the slider 300 times a second. So this is going to save uh, on some CPU. This is a much better way to do this. And yeah, so let's build that and make sure it works. Okay, um, get rid of that. I don't wanna see that. Here's our plugin. I'm gonna turn off the beat and let's make sure this still works. Cool. Okay. It works. Now there's really only one more thing we need to do and we have a full, fully featured plugin is we need the changes to be saved um, whenever we close, uh, whenever we save in the project and then reopen. And that's actually pretty simple. So in git state, we have, um, this will be called whenever you hit save, and then set state will be called whenever you start the plugin up. Uh, so a couple things, let's do this. We wanna make sure that the plugin initializes to um, our default value. So the the default value for gain is zero. The default value for phase is uh, false. So in the prepare function, I like to do this. It's not necessary, uh, but it makes me feel better. Is I will say um, phase is equal to whatever the, the tree state has right now. Dot get raw parameter phase. And raw gain is going to equal juice decibel decibel to gain. We can cast this from whatever it is right now to a float. So we can do a static cast to type float. And then whatever the thing is we want to cast to that float value, which is this tree state call right here. So we can do that. That should be fine. Prepare to play is going to call this the first time the plugin um, starts up. And then what we need to do is go into get state. And it's pretty simple. Save params. Okay, here we go. All right. So what we're going to do is just two lines of code. So we're going to make a juice memory output stream. Um, and we're going to pass it in destination data, which is the data pulled in from the host, the DAW, whatever. And then we're going to write our tree state to that stream so that the stream has all of our tree state stuff in it. So we kind of need to do the opposite in set state. Set state is whenever we open the plugin and need to initialize whatever the saved parameters were. Cool. So we're going to say we're going to recall the parameters and we're going to say uh, we're going to say a, a variable tree is equal to um, the value tree read from data right here. I just do this check to make sure that the tree is valid because it is possible that, um, the tree could be invalid for some reason. Um, it's happened to me before. If you're trying, if you have two versions of the same plugin, you're making changes to one, you're trying to open the other, it'll, you know, it'll do weird stuff. Um, but it is a good idea to go ahead and just check, um, if your tree is valid. I forgot to actually set the tree tree state dot state is equal to tree this thing that we put in right here oh look at that uh because i want to make a new instance so i'm going to do that hit save close open it and do it again so let's make an instance uh stream intro blah 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 we'll turn it down right here and we'll turn that on we'll close it let's make sure it yeah it saves it while it's open Close the project and look at that. Boom. Okay. So we have a UI that dynamically puts uh, 
objects as you put audio parameters. It's saving and recalling on close. Um, it's automatable. We can automate it and it's doing audio processing. This is all you need to get started to make plugins and it's, you know, fully featured. It's all there. This repo is public. So let's see. So you can go in and clone this repo and make changes. Um, or you can make your own project and you can kind of follow this, um, this code and it should work for you. Yep, the GUI takes forever, which is why I have the Viator DSP library that you can go download. And it has a bunch of pre-made GUI objects that look really nice. And Viator DSP. And these are what my GUI objects look like. This is my fader, my dial. Uh, this, is, this is my menu right here. Uh, that's the um, uh, combo box. This is the toggle. Um, and it has a bunch of different stuff in it. Like I have... So a border, a cool looking border, um, fader, a label, menu, a number box, push button, um, toggle button, all uh, made by overriding the look and feel with this style sheet. So you can go and download that and it'll be some really cool, um, you know, looking objects. Basically all we did in this two hours is uh, the complete audio side of a plugin and it's all fully featured and it works for you. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my streams over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash doctor underscore bruising, where I live stream juice and audio development tutorials on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 530 Central Standard Time. I'd love for you to drop into the chat, ask me questions live, and interact with me on stream. And don't forget the stream is also on my YouTube at Dr. Bruzen. You can also download the Viator DSP library that I'm currently working on to make Juice development even easier and faster with awesome looking user interface objects and DSP classes. There's also a documentation page for it, which is pretty cool, and you can find both of them on my GitHub. All of my current plugin releases are on my Patreon at Viator DSP and can be downloaded for free, but consider becoming a patron to continue to support me making free audio plugins. I'd also like to share two awesome Discord communities, Viator DSP and the audio visual community. Both are dedicated to all things audio, so music production, recording, mixing, mastering, uh, coding, juice, pretty much anything. We would love to build an active community of like-minded folks who can learn from, collaborate with, and just hang out with and do whatever. The link to all these resources are down in the video description, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, see you next time.